Hey Salem, hey Hope Factory. I hope everything is going well with you. We're so excited to have you here with us again for difficult conversations. Uh, we're talking about sexual identity. Yes, we are. And we have the most incredible young man with us here. We have Pastor Stephen. Yes, Stephen Thurston, not his daddy. Stephen Thurston, the, 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 the Stephen Thurston, our pastor, our teaching pastor, our incredible leader. Man, it's so good to have you here with us. We're talking about sex, man. We're talking about sexual identity. This is something that you have uh, spoken to, preached to, uh, talked about before. And we want to, man, you're talking to some young people, so let's break it down a little bit. But let's have a free and fun conversation. What is sexual identity? Um, uh, what is some tips? What are some tips you have um, as a person um, who has uh, uh, lived a life here, a real life? Um, uh, what What do you have to offer uh, and for us to get a little clarity on how we should be acting, uh, especially as young people, uh, online, sure. offline? I mean, let, let's hit it, you know? <laughs> let's do it, man. Let me start off by thanking you for having difficult conversations with Pastor John. You're, you're radical, you're a rebel, and I love it. So thank you uh, for having real, raw, and relevant conversation. Uh, so I'll throw a couple of things out here for the sake of our conversation. One, I want young people to not think, uh, which is something that my age group and my church kind of came up with, that God created our head and our torso, our arms and our legs, and then the devil threw on our genitals. <laughs> we, act, we, we just like demonize sex and sexuality, and it's because many people don't know how to have difficult conversations, what we don't understand, what we don't know how to clearly communicate. We just demonize it, and we, like, Satanize it. And I don't want young people to think that that's the case. We're made in God's image. Yes. God loves the body. He created the body, all of the body. And so don't feel so much shame as it relates to engaging in your sexuality. That's how God made us, and it's not anything we should fear or be ashamed of being created in God's image, God is multifaceted. Many aspects, dimensions, uh, facets of who God is. And so when we look at creation, we all different, man. Mm -hmm. We're all created unique. Um, and for some people, yeah, different doesn't mean deficient. Everything is not going to be the same. Everything is not going to flow in the same pattern. Your, your feelings, all of that, that's created by God. So don't shun that. Don't run away from it. And again, I wish church people would stop acting like, like, uh, let me put it this way, like being single and being young is like, is like detention. And then when we get married, that's graduation. Come on. Come on. So it puts young people in a place of we don't know what to do because it hasn't been discussed. It hasn't been dealt with. Our sexuality is at this cover, this sheet, put on top of it. And then the minute we say I do, it's like we're supposed to know what to do. We're supposed to know how to handle ourselves. We're supposed to all of a sudden, just like that, be in touch with the sexual dimension of our being. And so having these types of conversations, allowing young people the space to say, hey, something's going on with me. I'm feeling some stuff. I'm not feeling the same thing that my friends are feeling. Can we talk about this? I think I'm created different. I, all of that, it's, it's fun and it's, it's appropriate to have these types of conversations. And I'm going to throw something because you know I'm radical. You know I like pushing the envelope. Uh, when it comes to describing God from a sexual lens, I describe God as being transgendered. And I know that just blew somebody away. Let me, <laughs> let me exegete my text and lay the hay where the horses can get to it. Because we grew up uh, in patriarchy, and the biblical text was written from a patriarchal perspective, we hear the, the male side of God, God's father, things of that nature. But God has a feminine side. There are feminine attributes to God. So when I say God is transgender, my point is that God transcends gender and the gender roles that we've assigned. Because, again, God is multifaceted, so he has all of these aspects. Again, I say he. I remember being in seminary, and I would get penalized for just dealing with the male aspect of God and not touching on the feminine qualities and aspects of God. And so we have to recognize that God transcends gender, gender roles, 
and all of that, and, and again, embrace all of what God has made us to be. I hope that I hit some some stuff there. That that was great. That was good. Uh, and I hope that we can be found in the bosom of God. <laughs> what <laughs> help our parents out? Help our fa- you know even more so the parents help the um, the intergenerational the 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 interfamily uh, the yeah. interpersonal conversations. How do we do that better as a church at large or supposed to be God's people? Or how do we just do that better in the home with just, hey, brother to sister, mom to dad, that sort of sure. dynamic? And what are some of the blockers? And really, too, I'm going to zone it in, uh, even in our black community, that blocks us from having this open dialogue, like you said, where people can get clarity and learn, ask questions, and be open. Yeah. So I think we pass down what we were given in terms of no communication or bad communication or bad theology. And instead of parents or people in that, that older space saying, hey, even as an adult, I don't know how to have these conversations. I'm not well equipped. We've got to be open and honest and reach out to somebody else who may be better equipped. If parents aren't equipped to have that conversation, talk about the emotional aspects of sex and sexuality and how crossing that line impacts you more than just on the physical level but on the mental level and emotional level and even the spiritual level they need to be honest enough to say hey pastor john hey pastor stephen can you talk to my young people my daughter my son my niece my nephew about this in language that they can understand and then can you come back or come to me come to me and my wife me and my husband and give us cultures Give us some speaking points Mm -hmm. so that we can then effectively communicate when the questions come up after you and Pastor John are no longer on the scene. (laughs) So it's it's about Mm -hmm. being vulnerable, John, and saying, I don't know, just like earlier today, I called you about a matter that I'm not well versed on. I figured you may know. Hey, help me, John. And Mm -hmm. so we all got to be in that place of being able to reach out and say, I need some help. Mm -hmm. Again, also understanding that a lot of our theology is bad theology. And I don't want to beat up on our grandparents, great-grandparents, all of them. They did the best that they could with the information that they had. But it's too much information for us to still be woefully ignorant. Yeah. You, you can Google how to talk to my kids about having sex. <laughs> or, or, oh. It's simple. There's so much information out here that people can access and use to engage in healthy conversation. I even did a series. I taught it. Uh, we would do these things on Tuesday nights back when we were gathering together. Yeah. And I did a thing on single sexuality. That can be applied to any age group. I'm happy to teach that again. I'm happy to share that content. So, John, if that's something that you and I want to partner on, yeah. we can we can do that series, teach that series. And, again, that will give clarity to younger people, older people, and this whole, again, intergenerational thing. And let me fire back again at the adults, at the parents. Will y'all please stop acting like you've been saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost your whole life? Because if we look at the birth certificate and the marriage certificate, some of y'all only got married because you got pregnant. Come on. And we need to be honest and, and tell our kids, yep, I, I got your mama pregnant. And so from there, we ended up getting married. I still love her. I appreciate the fact that we got married. But yeah, we were having sex before we got married. Be honest, because that honesty opens up the dialogue for them to share their feelings, their thoughts, to see you as an adult, as a parent, as a real human being. That that, that went through the same physiological changes and emotional needs and feelings and questions that they're having right now. So let's take down the wall. Stop being Trump. Stop building walls. Build bridges. (laughs) Tear down the wall and build some bridges of communication so that we can learn and glean and share from each other. Young people can learn something from older people, and older people can still learn something from younger people. Yeah, and I think your boldness in speaking about this uh, issue when it comes to sexual identity and sexuality it, within the church and outside of, outside of the church has, if we could give you a medal, if we could give you the flowers now, has allowed for you to move to a place in your teaching and your preaching where you've been able to even stand on the front line and what I got there, an amazing sermon on de- on defending uh, those who have been sexually abused 
Yeah. Uh, and, and I think we don't get to those places because we just stop so early, like you said, with our bad the or narrow or limited theology or what's been passed yeah. down, that it doesn't take us to the place of the church speaking out about sex workers, the church speaking out about uh, sexual trafficking, the church speaking out about abuse and molestation, the church being yeah. on the forefront because we're not being bold with the gospel to speak out into areas where it's most important, not just that we mix up our understanding of, of how to communicate about sex, but also we don't get to defend those who are poor, who are disenfranchised, who are ostracized, yeah. who need us to be there to defend that. You've done that. Exactly. You modeled that. I want to give you time as we're closing out to speak out of that boldness in defense of those who need defense, encouragement, or or more clarity and light who might be on the fringes of our yep. society. Sexually. Listen, man, the biblical, the biblical text is filled with everything that we see on TV, in the movies, and people like, oh, it's R-rated. We can't watch that on mm -hmm. TV. But the Bible talks about that. You got child marriage. You got human trafficking. You got sex slaves. You, you, you got rape. You got, you got molestation. You got all of that right there in the biblical text. And we need to stop looking at the biblical text with rose-tinted lenses. Listen, the biblical text were letters written by Jewish men to other Jewish men or Jewish men written to other Jewish communities. When you really distill and break down what the biblical text is, that's what it was. They didn't know 3,000 years later we were going to call it the Holy Bible. They were writing letters to help communities because they were not an individualistic society. They were a communal society. They did everything together as community. And so if somebody got married, that was a community event in terms of who got married to who, all of that mattered. And so even in the text, we see abuse happening. We see rape happening, as you spoke. I, I preached about that recently. And there are people suffering and struggling in our congregation, man, in our communities, in our houses, in our families, at the family reunion, because uncle raped niece, and all of that's happening. And so the church, again, as you said, has to be a trumpet, has to speak for those who don't have the voice and the platform. Address the issue, because if we don't fix it, we'll never face If we don't face it, we'll never be able to fix it. And so stop being uh, in a place of operating out of shame. Bring these issues to the forefront, because it's right there in the text. Quit skipping over it so we can shout and hoop and holler and run. No. Let's deal with the real life issues that people are dealing with because young people, and you'll say amen to this all day long, they want to know how is the biblical text going to help me Monday through Friday, Monday through Saturday? How does this 3,000 year old ancient text apply to my everyday life? And when we don't deal with the issues that our young people are dealing with, when you look at the numbers of HIV and AIDS cases in CPS, when you look at the Chicago being a human sex trafficking mecca, we have to talk about what's happening in day-to-day -day life, tie it back to the text, and allow people to walk away from that interaction with some hope, with some clarity, with some understanding, and hopefully with some fire on the inside of them to engage those issues at a passionate level to bring about change. Because the launching pad and the landing place of the biblical text of what Jesus says boils down to love. Loving our neighbors as ourselves, and everybody is our neighbor. And so for the LGBTQ or whatever other letter I may have missed out, for, for the eunuchs in society, that's biblical. That's in the text. They had eunuchs. If you don't know what that is, Google it. For those who are raped, for those who've been abused, for, for those whose parents have done stuff to them, listen, God loves you, and the church has to do a better job of loving you and informing you and encouraging you of what God says about you, that he cares for you, that he loves you that he's not putting labels on you like the rest of society is. And the same grace that everybody else gets, those of you who feel that you're on the fringes of the Christian community, the same grace is going to be applied to you. It applies to you. And forget what other people are saying about you. What God says about you and to you matters the most. I hope I encouraged and helped somebody right there. That was powerful. That was incredible. Thank you so much for taking the time, hopping off the airplane to speak to us and to do this. But this is what it's about. If we can't take yes, this gospel, this message, this help, this hope to people who need it, then, well, then we need to get, just hang up the towel. You know what I mean? Hang it all up. But exactly. I really appreciate it. And let's do this again because I'm realizing cool. that this conversation 
is a big one, and we need to continue this. So I'll be looking forward to having this conversation with you again cool. and diving deeper into this past the Thursday. Let's do it. Hey, and for the young people tuned in, if y'all ever got questions and want to reach me, shoot me an email. Slide in my DM. Follow me on social media. Stephen Thurston on IG. Uh, Stephen Thurston on Instagram. Uh, let me see where else. My Facebook, uh, YouTube, uh, Twitter, SJT Speaks. Follow me. Don't be afraid to email me, Instagram me, DM, I am, however you want to carry a pigeon, however you want to reach me. I'm here for you to aid you, to assist you, and to walk through life with you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. All right.